Welcome to a Global Risk Community Chat. Today, our guest is Janet Labuda. I'm very happy to have you here today, Janet. Welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to this podcast. I want to give you a bit of an introduction um, before we start our topic on forced labor. And um, as you said, my name is Janet Labuda, and I am the head of compliance for MERS Custom Services, which is a premier customs house broker. Prior to joining MERSC, I was 31 years working on a number of trade enforcement issues globally with US Customs and Border Protection. So as I said, today our, our topic is forced labor. And I wanna set the stage with a little bit of background to uh, help our, our folks, the people that are going to be listening to us today, put this all in context. So in a recent conference, an industry conference that I attended, uh, importers were polled regarding what they thought the biggest risk to their business was. And overwhelmingly, the response was forced labor being discovered in their supply chain. Now, in 2022, the United States passed the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. And this comes on the heels of changes in legislation prohibiting goods and their components made with forced labor from entering the commerce of the United States. So what happens is they're detained, they could be seized at the border. I had one client, for example, that lost $10 million in sales, really risky to the business, almost went out of business. Currently, the United States Senate is launching investigations into the use of forced labor into the auto parts industry. Now, the United States, Canada, and Mexico, in their free trade agreement, have committed all three economies to preventing goods made with forced labor from entering the economic region. The European Union is preparing a legislative and enforcement package to prohibit goods made by forced labor from entering the EU. The new legislation requirement is expected to go into effect at the end of 2024 or early 2025. In addition, similar initiatives are occurring in the United Kingdom and Australia. This issue really needs to be front and center of all C-suites and corporations. Social compliance departments must be preparing strategic corporate plans to address this issue. And it needs to include compliance departments logistics departments as well. Recently, in September 2022, the United States Department of Labor published their 2022 study on forced and child labor, and they really presented a very dire picture. The report lists 78 countries where forced or child labor is being used. The industries most impacted are garment production, cotton harvesting, gold, sugarcane, the fishing industry, critical solar industries, electronics, coal, timber, and tomato production. And, and the list continues to grow. The bottom line is from a social compliance perspective that this is a global problem. It is part of the human trafficking dynamic. So why is this a risk for companies? What can they do? All the current legislation and guidance by regulators talks about supply chain traceability. So that means understanding who is touching the manufacturing process at all stages, from the components to the production of the final product. Most companies don't know the depth and breadth of their supply chains. They may know the first or second tier players, but when it comes to talking about where the cotton is coming from, where the cobalt mine in the lithium battery industry is coming from, where that lithium is coming from, this is unknown. So how do, how do we obtain sufficient information? Regulators are asking for clear and concise evidence to rebut the presumption that forced labor is in the chain. When we talk about the Uyghur Forced Labor Act, all customs has to say is we are presuming 
that anything that is coming out of the UXAR contains forced labor. So companies rarely get advance notice of regulatory enforcement action. Timeframes to produce documents are very short. In most instances, it's 30 days. And you have to then drill through the supply chain to get all this information. So since June of 2022, when the, when the Forced Labor Act went into effect in the US, US Customs has detained 2,200 shipments worth about $728 million. Only 13% of those shipments were released, which means that companies were able to get only 13% of the time, the evidence and information necessary for customs to say, okay, there's no forced labor in your chain. And companies are being challenged with commingling. Uh, for example, if you have one thread of cotton that could potentially be made with forced labor and that enters a man's shirt, that entire shirt is considered tainted. Inability to obtain documents, in most instances, Companies are doing a manual process to try to figure out who's producing and then get documents as to what part of the process they were working on. Certification in the past was always used, but that's insufficient today. Third party auditors are being blocked from going in and auditing the chain. There is an inability to obtain information which allows you to mine the supply chain data. And then finally, <clears throat> anytime you have a regulatory change, companies and countries will try to circumvent the regulation. So you're faced with illegal transshipment. So for example, if something is considered a problem in one country, but you change the country of origin to show that it's on paper from another country, that presents problems to the trade community, to the importing community. So now, what can companies do? I actually want to ask exactly that because I hear that uh, there's a, like it, it has a big global impact. The forced labor has a big global impact. But how can companies addre address this uh, risk in general? Yes, I mean one of the things is that data is key. Creating what I call a shared source of truth is important. Using common data sources by all parties, government, private sector, importers, shippers, brokers, is going to be critical. So you're going to have to have a common set of data points that are accurate and that can be obtained easily and can be updated regularly. Creating public and private dialogue around the data to seek common ground to solve problems. Now, when I talk about this, Maersk Custom Services has partnered with a company called Altana Artificial Intelligence, Altana AI. And we are working to address the challenges of forced labor in the supply chain by a unique blend of data, shipping data, logistics data, customs entries and business ownership and analytics and the application of robust uh, AI algorithms. So this solution pierces the veil of the supply chain. Uh, it not only does that, it identifies high risk transactions, high risk changes to normal shipping patterns to uncover instances of illegal transshipment and to uncover risk within the supply chain with regard to forced labor. Predictive modeling, machine learning, artificial intelligence, based on a solid foundation of reliable data is where companies and regulators need to be if this global problem is going to be effectively addressed. Thank you for sharing that as well. Uh, since we are running out of uh, time a little bit, I want to ask one last question and that is, what would be some takeaway points you could share with our audience? Well, I think there's about five takeaway points when I think about it. So knowing all the players in your supply chain and knowing what they do in your supply chain, what part of the manufacturing process they're in. Keeping current on all changes and updates to regulatory and legislative initiatives, 
That's really important. And also to be aware of any of the announcements that custom services or regulators are making with regard to risk. Develop a corporate strategic plan to address the possibility that forced labor could be in your supply chain. And if it is in your supply chain and custom stops you, what are you going to do and how is that going to affect your company? And then finally, again, I will reiterate that every C-suite must be engaged in this issue. Brand integrity is critical to the corporation and being linked to forced labor and human trafficking is just against all social compliance standards. Thank you so for thank sharing. you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that as well. And with that being said, we have uh, run out of our time. So I want to thank you so much once again for joining us today, for sharing all these insights. I think like forced labor is actually quite interesting that all these uh, legislations are just coming into effect for, you know, this like in, in Europe not came in effect yet. So very interesting to hear about that, you know, that there is, of course, something being done, but at the same time in a late sense. But thank you so much. Thank you. It was great to be with you today. Likewise. Have a great day. You too.